Hello. <coughs> Good morning. Finally. Hello. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. So, after long time. Actually, we are doing this after a long time. So, we will continue this till we go for the prelims. So, this story will keep going on now without wasting too much of a time. So, how is everybody going? How is preparation going? Preparing for 2024, syllabus, I mean, of your writing. <coughs> yes, after so many days, yes. See, I have some, I'm actually traveling, so I'm not at home. So, basically, my video may be a little like that, but that's okay. As long as audio is there and you're able to see the screen, that's fine. I'm doing good. I'm busy. I've been working at different places. Um, so, things have been going pretty packed. Now, let us see the first question for the day. <clears throat> Who obtained this site of Madras and from whom? Captain Hawkins from the Nawab of Karnatic. Sir Thomas Rowe from the Nizam of Hyderabad, Sir Charles Iyer from the Raja of Valikondapuram, Francis Day from the Raja of Chandragiri. Tell me who obtained the side of Maras and from whom? This is all good, right? Okay, it was Sir Francis Day from the Raja of Chandragiri. Now, the primary reason or primary aim of why he actually took that is, um, <coughs> in fact, we believe there are two places which he took. One is the uh, the site of Madras, uh, which is uh, the Chennapatnam today. The other site which um, Francis Day took is uh, Fort Devi Patnam. Fort Devi Patnam. Devi Patnam was the second site. So, answer is D. Now, next question. In the context of modern history, the lightning conductor and conspiracy theory was related to? He took Madras, yes, Parth. He took Madras on the lease of uh, 300 rupees and also a lease a share of 50% of the customs revenue which Madras will generate. 50% of the customs revenue with the, which Madras will generate. Yes. <clears throat> lightning conductor theory and uh, the conspiracy theory and uh, safety wall theory are different theories which are dedicated to the formation of uh, Indian National Congress. It was actually, uh, there, there are a couple of theories which are given like R.P. Dutt who wrote the economic history of India. R.P. Dutt who wrote the economic history of India gave the lightning con uh, conspiracy theory where he opined that Indian National Congress was born out of a conspiracy to abort a popular uprising in India and uh, the bourgeoisie leader, the middle class leaders were primarily party to this conspiracy. The lightning conductor theory on the other hand, Bipin Chandra observes the early Congress leaders used A. O. Hume, Alan Octavian Hume, the original founder, <coughs> as a lightning conductor that is a catalyst to, the bring, to bring together the nationalistic forces even if under the guise of that any disgruntlement or any unhappiness which the people might have about Congress, about formation of Congress may actually be handled appropriately to the right channel. Consider the following statements. The complete independence of the main aim of Indian National Congress in the initial stage. First session of Indian National Congress was presided by Dadabai Nauraji. And uh, Dadabai Nauraji played the main role in establishing a British Committee of Indian National Congress in London. How many, how many of the above statements these are are correct? Are 
are there issues with the stream See, <clears throat> complete independence was never the aim of uh, initial state of Congress. So, uh, complete independence was never really the aim of uh, first aim of Congress. First session of Congress was presided by Vomesh Chandra Banerjee, not Dada Banerjee. Uh, the main role of Congress was establishing a British Committee of Indian National Congress in London. Um, that part is true. Uh, if you understand, East India Association. So, answer is A. Only statement 3 is correct. Dada Ben Oroji along with W. C. Wedderburn attempted to establish an East India Committee, a British Committee of Indian National Congress in London, mainly to popularize the demands of middle class Indians in London. Only one option is correct. The first session was attempt, uh, attended by 72 delegates. Vomesh Chandra Banerjee was the leader. Aims and objectives was a uh, complete independence was never the aim. It only became the primary aim of Congress in 1929. Now, consider the following statements regarding the early nationalists of India. The moderates campaigned for Indianization of government services. Mass participation of people was a unique feature of early nationalist movement. Which of the above statements is or are incorrect? Moderates did campaign for the Indianization of services. Moderates had a very narrow base and masses played only a passive role. Mm, yes, B is the answer. The answer primarily this was because early nationalists actually lacked political faith in masses. I mean, early nationalists considered that masses are not yet capable of doing a national movement. Because of the lack of mass participation, the moderates could not take militant political positions against the uh, authorities and moderates campaigned definitely for Indianization of services on economic, political and moral grounds. Powerful newspapers emerged during the years before Swadeshi movement. Match the following newspapers and their editors. Swadeshi Mitran G. Subramanya Mayer, Amrit Bazar Patrika, Motilal Ghosh, Voice of India, N. N. Sen. How many of their statements these are, are correct? Answer is B. Yes. Swadeshi Mitran obviously was under uh, G. Subramani Mayer. Kesari and Maharatha under Tilak. Surendranath Banerjee and Bengali. Amrit Bazar Patrika was under Sisirda, Sisir Kumar Ghosh and Motilal Ghosh. Sudharak was under G. K. Gokle, Gopal Krishna Gokle. And uh, Indian Mirror was under N. N. Sen. Good morning, Ramya. Indian Mirror was under N. N. Sen. Uh, Voice of India was under Dada Bhai Naraji. 
in fact <clears throat> look there exists a lot of political leaders in india who did not possess a newspaper or was not writing in in some of the other capacity so well good number of indian nationalist movement leaders who are involved in newspaper publications <clears throat> there are also a good number of people who were not involved in newspaper publications as well remember both the statements consider the following statements regarding minto morle reforms it retained official majority in the central council but allowed the provincial legislative councils to have non official majority it introduced a system of communal representation for muslims by accepting the concept of separate electorate it granted a franchise to the limited number of people on the basis of property tax or education how many of the above statements is or are correct only one only two all the three none of the above please go through the question again properly answer would be b b b b b it retained official majority at the central council but allowed provincial legislative councils to have non official majority it did introduce a system of communal representation for muslims by accepting the concept of separate electorate under this the muslim members were to be elected only by the muslim voters government of india act of 1919 granted a franchise to a limited number of people on the basis of property tax or education yes identify fort st george and fort williams with their respective settlements fort st george and fort williams <coughs> Madras and Calcutta. Fort Saint George, Madras, Sir Francis Day, Calcutta, Fort Williams, uh, Job, Charnock, sixteen ninety, Calcutta sixteen ninety, Madras sixteen thirty nine. Right. Okay. At which of the following places on the west coast did Indian English have their factories? Ahmedabad, Salsad, Baroda, Braj, Basain. English factories on the west coast. Select the answers from the codes given below. One, two, and three. One, two, and four. One, three, and four. Two, three, and five. Good morning, Varsha. Good morning. Good morning. See, we'll do these sessions more regularly now because the prelims is coming closer. I'll, if I can't find time, I'll make time. I, we have to do these sessions more regularly. You have to get used to that question pattern making. So, we'll do this more regularly. Okay. And uh, also for you guys, um, if you need some topic to be retaken, some class to be taken again, just let me know. We'll do it on YouTube only. Okay, any of the art and culture topics or uh, history, specific chapters of history, batado. We'll get it done. We'll make time, we'll plan it, and we'll make it done. Answer is C. I will answer, I'll, I'll now answer Ramya. There are too many people who, there are three, four Ramyas who pinged me. <laughs> That's why helping it, helping it. Answer is C. <coughs> okay, no. Which of the following statements about the activities of British on the West Coast are true? 
Till 1687, all English factories on the west coast were under the control of the president and the company of their factory in Surat. In 1670, the company purchased Bombay from Charles II for a nominal amount of £100 only. Uh, in 1687, Bombay replaced Surat as the headquarters of the company and on the west coast. And uh, in 1688, the English under Sir John Child captured many Mughal ships off the west coast and disrupted the traffic of Hajj pilgrims. Choose the correct answers from the codes given below. 1, 2 and 3, 1, 3 and 4, 2, 3 and 4, 1, 2 and 4. Choose the correct answers. Yes, the answer must be B. B, 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 B. One, three, and four. Bombay was not purchased. Bombay was taken on lease. Bombay was given on lease. Lease, lease, not purchased. Right? Yes, Parpurna, yes. Which of the following statements about Madras are correct? In 1640, the British obtained the site of Madras from the Raja Valikondapuram. British built a fortified factory, that is uh, Fort St. George, at Madras. In 1658, all the English settlements on the Coromandel and in the eastern India were placed under the control of Fort St. George. In 1801, Lord Wellesley created Madras Presidency <coughs> as it existed till India's independence. Choose the correct answers from the codes given below. 1, 2 and 4, 1, 3 and 4, 1, 2 and 3, 2, 3 and 4. Answer D. D, 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 yes, Parth, D, answer D. Two, three, and four. Not Raja of Valikondapuram, Raja of Chandragiri. Raja of Chandragiri, not Valikondapuram. Raja of Chandragiri. <coughs> okay. Now, which of the following places in Odisha did the British establish factories in 1633? Katak, Hariharpur, Patna and Dhaka. This is a previous year question. Select the answers from the codes given below. 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 2 and 4, 1 and 4. Answer is C. C, C, C. 1633. Remember this all permanently. Yeah, either clue. <coughs> Odisha, uh, Hariharpur, and Dhaka. Patna Katak to Odisha, many Angana. Katak with Haini factory. Okay. Which of the following places in Bengal and Bihar had English factories? Now, these this type of questions used to come in previous year questions. This is a previous year question. Hogli, Chinsura, Patna, Dhaka, Mungir, and Kasim Bazar.
acá Munguir en el campo. Hmm. This was complicated, man. No. The answer is A. Yes. Answer is A. One, three, four, and six. Chinsura is largely a Dutch settlement, right? Chinsura was largely a Dutch settlement. And uh, Mungir was under the... Remember um, Mir Kasim, just before Battle of Baksar, moved his capital from Murshidabad to Munger, where he then created an alliance with the Dutch, which is actually the trigger point to start of Battle of Baksar. I'm repeating, Mir Kasim, who was replaced, who, who replaced Mir Jafar in 1760, 1750, moved his capital to Munger. So Munger was actually under Nawabs of Bengal. <coughs> Which are the following statements about British and Bengal are in the British purchased three villages, Sutanti, Kalikata, and Gobindapur in 1698 from the governor of Bengal. They fortified their factory. At uh, Sutaduti in 1699, with the permission of the Mughal governor of Bengal, the fortified factory at Sutanuti was named uh, Fort Williams in uh, 1700. All the English settlements in Bengal were placed under the separate control of Presidency and Council of Fort Williams in 1700. Choose the correct answers from the codes given below 1 and 3, 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4. Yes, Parth, um, the arms factory, yes. Guys, to the extent of the stream, uh, you're able to, overall, the video is okay. And then voice, you're able to hear perfectly only, no? No issues. Three villages? Yes, they did buy. No doubt. Three villages they did buy. Okay. <coughs> and uh, they fortified Sutanuti in 1699 with the permission of uh, governor and that's what eventually became Fort Williams. And uh, um, no, it was 1690 Fort Williams. So um, 1690 itself they made Fort Williams. Not from, uh, British did not, uh, three villages in 1690, not 1698, 1690. So that's why first statement is wrong. They fortified their factory in Sutanitin, 1690 only, no? That's why one and two are incorrect. One and two statements are incorrect. Okay, the question is asking incorrect. Are in the following events in the history of East India Company in chronological order. The resolution of the British Parliament giving equal rights to all Englishmen um, to trade in the East. Formation of a rival company by a group of merchants under Sir William Cotton. Transformation of East India Company into a joint stock company. And uh, amalgamation of Cotton's company with the East India Company. Here is an interesting story. I will tell you the story. Choose the correct answers from the quotes given below. In fact, even I am doing a live stream after almost like six months. So even for me, um, it takes, it took time for me to get used to again. Um, almost six months later, I'm doing this. I'm also putting small important current affairs topics on my Instagram. So Instagram link is there on the top. Do follow that. Because uh, for prelims, prelims 2024, I'm doing shots, uh, just uh, under 90 minutes, and under 90 seconds, one and a half minute wale. Small, small topics for uh, prelims. Quick rec uh, revision. <laughs> Do follow that. Answer is uh, D. Okay, I'll tell you one, what happened. <laughs> um, 
when east india company was created the merchants and traders of the of london trading in the east company was created under thomas smith william cotton was another guy who also created another former rival company a group of merchants <coughs> initially these both companies aimed to come to india but but um cotton's company was uh, then merged into the uh, smith company and that is what eventually became her majesty's east india company yes ramya yeah, i am in delhi <coughs> Yes, Ramya, I'm in Delhi, I'm in Delhi. Um, then East India Company was converted into a joint stock com company with 24 court of directors. <laughs> and finally, a, a resolution was passed in the court, uh, in the parliament, providing absolute trading permits for this company to come to India and do trade. So there's not just one company, there were two, three companies which were created initially. Eventually, they were all merged to create one company. Which of the following statements? These are true. Um, a new rival company known as uh, the English Mer Company of Merchants Trading to the East Indies was formed in 1698. The new company sent Sir William Norris to Aurangzeb's court and uh, succeeded in securing trading privileges uh, for itself. Um, the old and the new companies came to an understanding in 1702 after a brief uh, period of ruinous competition. By the award of Goldfin in 1708, they were amalgamated under the title the United Company of Merchants and Trading East Indies, which existed till 18. 18- 58 now this was actually a previous year question one of the most you can say unpredictable questions now for you for 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 for, 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 for an aspirant please understand there will be coming such questions my ideal guess in such questions is to let it go if you do not have an idea then there's no point struggling there's no point trying to be a hero and that's my view there's no point trying to be a hero and uh, ek question mein zameen jaydat nahi jane wali hai par uh, mark to pakka jayega if you put this wrong because this is something you would have never no william norris naam to kabhi suna bhi nahi hoga you would have not even heard the word uh, william norris i mean you don't i'm sure you wouldn't even know that there was somebody called william norris <laughs> right <clears throat> answer is actually a ah, skip skip that type of questions skip Answer is A. Uh, you you'll only hear about three people. Um, uh, Middleton, Hawkins and uh, Rowe. There are only three Europeans you will actually hear a lot. Middleton, Hawkins and Rowe. Right. John Middleton, William Hawkins and Thomas Rowe. <laughs> Which of the following statements about English East India Company are true? It was formed in 1599 by a group of merchants known as Merchants Adventurers. It was granted a charter by the Queen Elizabeth in 1600, giving it monopoly of Eastern trade for an indefinite period. The company monopoly of Eastern trade was abolished by James I in 1609. It decided to open a factory at Surat in 1608. Choose the correct answers from the codes given below. Uh, 1 and 2, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 4, 1 and 4. Yes, answer is A. <coughs> A. <laughs> uh, the monopoly got abolished in 1813, guys, and uh, Surat Factory 1612. Surat Factory 1612. Monopoly got abolished in 1813, no? Match the following. List 1 and List 2. Arrival of Hawkins at Jahangir's court, arrival of Thomas Rowe at Jahangir's court, arrival of Milden Hall in India, Port defeat of Portuguese fleet by English at uh, Swaliho, the Battle of Swaliho.
The answer is B. B, B, B. Which of the following statements uh, give which code gives the correct matchings of the following lists? 1611, 1612, uh, 1613, 1619, 1626. Jahangir's Parman permitting the company to establish a factory at Surat. Establishment of English company, English factory at Machili Patnam. And the establishment of English factory at Armagao and Pulikat. Departure of Thomas Road for England. Now, Ek is the clear hai. Machili Patnam, earliest, 1611, that you know, 1B. Then you can tell the answer. Answer is uh, D. D, D. Remember, Machali Patnam was the first factory. When Jahangir, Jahang, um, when Hawkins and Roe tried to get permissions to establish Surat factory, particularly William Hawkins in 1608, it was not given for a fortified factory. Permission to establish a fortified factory was not given. So that's the reason. Uh, they went to the Raja of Golconda, the Nawab of Golconda, and Golconda Nawab actually gave permission to establish a factory at Machali Patnam, which was under Golconda Nawab's control. And that is how in Machali Patnam the first English factory was established. Eventually, re discussions restarted, and in 1612, the Surat factory was established. Uh, 1613, Surat factory was established. <coughs> now, match the following list one and list two. Correct. Bimli Patnam, Jinsura, Machali Patnam, Surat. 1605, 1616, 1641, 1645, and And I'll tell you next class when this will be there. Let me check my schedule. Next we'll have on Friday. Next class again, PYQs, we will have on Friday. Friday morning. Friday morning, Friday morning. Okay. Uh, Answer is A. Varsha, you are right. A. A, no, Varsha. Okay. Now, which of the following statements is or are true? The Dutch established their factory at Cochin in 1663. Pulikat was their main centre in India till 1690. The Dutch set up a factory at Nagapatnam in 1658. In After 1690, Nagapatnam became the main centre of uh, Dutch in India. Which of the following codes is or are correct? Given below. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4, all of them. All of the above. Yes, Machali Patnam first for Dutch also. Varsha, yes.
आंसर इज डी आंसर इज डी 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 Pulikat was their main center of operations. Nagapattinam became their capital. They did have a Nagapattinam factory in 1658, and Dutch did establish the factory at uh, Cochin in 1663. The first, uh, one of the earliest Dutch uh, factories. Which of the following places did the Dutch set up factories in 1658? Kasim Bazar, Baranagor, Hooghly, Patna, Cochin, and Balasore. Answer is D. This is all pure factual questions, guys. At uh, pre two thousand four, these type of questions used to come. They used to ask like this: When was the Dutch East India Company formed and invested with powers to make wars, conclude treaties, and acquire territories, and the like? Sixteen hundred, sixteen not one, sixteen not two, sixteen not three. It is a uh, sixteen not two. Yes, Cornelius de Houtman. Cornelius de Houtman is actually the guy who founded the Dutch East India Company. It was the first company to in even among the East India Company, it was the first company to be given charter powers to colonize territories, to conduct wars, to conduct treaties, to acquire territories, to go on extra expansions. To do everything a state will do. To do everything a state will do or a state can do. Cornelius de Houtman. Okay, now, what is the historical sequence of establishment of the following uh, French factories? Machili Patnam, Mahe, Surat, and Pondicherry. The answer is C. <coughs> C. Surat obviously was the first. Um, this is actually golden principle. You will see two places which are actually first for both of them. If it is on the west coast, it is Surat. If it is on the east coast, it is uh, Pondicherry. Uh, Machli Patnam. Machli Patnam and Surat have always been, you can say, centers of attraction for all European powers who actually came to India. Machali Patnam and Surat. You will consistent, consistently keep seeing this. You will consistently keep seeing this. Arrange the following settlements of the French in their correct chronology. Yanam, Chandanagar, Karekal and Santhom. Yanam, Karekal, Chandanagar and Santhom. You will hear about Santhom in the first Carnatic War. You'll actually hear about Santhom in the first Carnatic one. Answer is B. First Carnatic one, 1741, Santhom. That's why I gave you the hint of first Carnatic one. It was first established, the French had a settlement in Santhom. Santhom is inside, uh, uh, very close to the area which we today call Chennai or Madras. It's part of Madras, St. Thomas. Um, they established a settlement in... Uh, Bengal, 
बंगाल में चंदर नागौर और टुडे वी कॉल इट चंदा नगर देन यानम इन आंध्र प्रदेश इन खरे खला दी वेस्ट कोस्ट नियर दी नियर केरला which of the following statements about the french east india company are true it was formed in 1600 by a group of french merchants the man behind its formation was uh, colbert it was owned and managed by the french government it was abolished in 1725 choose the correct answers from the codes given below this one you will know all the answers but you will have a doubt about one or two points Answer is B. B, 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 B. Yes. Yes. Two and three. It was not formed by French merchants. It was formed by French government. And uh, Jean Baptiste Colbert, the French finance minister, played an instrumental role in forming it. It was owned and managed by the French government. Completely owned and managed by the French government. Answer is B. No. It continued. No. For a long period. Um, consider the following statements. He was a Bengali mathematician and physicist specializing in theoretical physics. He is best known for his work on quantum mechanics in the early 1920s. He was awarded India as the second highest civilian award, the Padma Bhushan by the government of India. Which of the following statements best describes the qualities? Jagdish Chandra Bose, Subhash Chandra Bose, Satyendranath Bose and Meghanan Saha. <laughs> Meghanan Saha. See, Satyendranath Bose, 1894 to 1974, he was a Bengali mathematician and a physicist specializing in Bose-Einstein particle or the Higgs boson particle. Peter Higgs, Bose particle. Uh, he is one of the best known for quantum, mechan quantum mechanics in the 1920s and developing the Bose-Einstein statistics, basically based on the Bose condenser theory. And uh, he was a fellow of the Royal Society. He was awarded India as a second highest civilian award, Padma Vibhushan in 1954. The class of uh, particles that obey Bose statistics called known as bosons was named after Bose by Paul Dirac. He is actually one of the members of the Higgs boson particle theory. You know, Pete, uh, the other guy along with him is Peter Higgs, which is what today we call God particle. And you know, we are doing an experiment called the CERN experiment, C-E-R-N experiment. It's happening to find out this particle only, Higgs boson particle. Consider the following statements about uh, ASI. It is an attached office of the Ministry of Culture. It was founded in 1861 by Alexander Cunningham. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Archaeological Survey of India. Everybody knows it was started by Alexander Cunningham, yes, but it was in 1875 that it actually became fully operative. ISI was an attached office of uh, uh, Minister of Culture and uh, currently, C, C, C is right, C is right, C is right, C is right, C is right. Both statements are right. It's a, it's an attached office of Ministry of Culture. Varsha, correct only. 
it is in charge of protection and maintenance of centrally protected areas today it has a statutory provision zamasar act archaeological monument ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains act 1958 it was founded in 61 by alexander cunningham when he realized that we there is a need for permanent body and uh, eventually in 1904 ancient monuments act 1904 or ancient monuments preservation act made the destruction of uh, ancient monuments as an offense and uh, directed the officials to collect and preserve the monuments <coughs> consider the following facts uh, sent an expedition to tibet undertook the restoration of taj mahal founded the imperial cadet corps which are the following uh, viceroy's contributions is mentioned above the tibet expedition uh, undertook the restoration of taj mahal founded the imperial cadet corps very easy this tibetan expedition was called young husband expedition young husband expedition and restoration of taj mahal somebody who had extensive amount of focus on protecting india's heritage monuments and antiques karzan babu yes <coughs> lord karzan he appointed a fraser commission the police commission under andrew fraser in 1902 he also appointed the universities commission 1902 where he took over the universities established department of commerce and industry which we have even today the calcutta corporation act in which uh, government took over the operations of the um, um, calcutta corporation the autonomy of calcutta corporation was abolished or removed or reduced ancient monuments preservation act where he started to give legal protections for monuments he also played a substantial role in uh, bengal partition karzan kitchener controversy was a controversy which happened in london about uh, dispute and lord karzan sent the young husband mission to um tibet this is what eventually led to development of the mac mohan line which of the following pairs these are correctly matched mazulam cattle kathani cattle sanchori mazulam cattle meghalaya kathani cattle maharashtra sanchori kerala I know this factual information, guys. The answer is Puttandi Buffalo, Purnatadi Buffalo, Vidarbha region. Kathani is a dual-purpose cattle, mainly observed. It is known for its good draft ability and is suited for marshy lands for paddy cultivation. And uh, Masilom is a small size but well-built, sturdy cattle of Meghalaya. It is mainly observed seen in uh, Khasi Jaintia communities for sports. Non urban social cultural festivals. Yes, exactly. These are these are factually basically a current affairs type of factual question where either you know or you don't know. There's no midway. There's no guesswork. There's no magic. There's no smart guess, etc. Sagol Kang Jai, an indigenous game of Manipur, is similar to the modern day sports of Sagol Kang Jai. Ever heard of it? similar to polo modern polo is originated from sagol kange it is a sports indigenous to manipur where uh, <coughs> the manipuri horses manipuri ponies which are referenced in the records of 14th century marjing is considered the god of polo and uh, features as a pony which is a pony as his career lai haroba festival in the state depicts the kharui phaba and uh, polo playing sports of uh, sanjoy kange sangol kange uh manipuri pony which is the smaller size of uh, horse and donkey mix uh, is one of the five recognized equine breeds breeds of india and uh, marjing polo complex has been developed there is a to conserve the manipuri pony in which state is 
परशुराम कुंड फेस्टिवल सेलिब्रेटेड अरुणाचल प्रदेश मणिपुर त्रिपुरा नागालैंड परशुराम कुंड दीप परशुराम कुंड The answer is uh, A. The Prime Minister's, I mean, last year, Arunachal Pradesh. Parushuram Kund, Arunachal Pradesh. Hindu pilgrimage on the Brahmaputra plateau in the lower areas of Lohit River. It is dedicated to Sage Parushuram. It is actually, uh, um, uh, this program ke baare mein update aaya tha this year. It is part of the Prashad. Uh, pilgrimage, Regeneration and Spiritual Heritage and Augmentation Drive. Under Ministry of Tourism. Parushuram Kund. Is like a talab, like a pond, like a tank in Arunachal Pradesh. Consider the following statements about Ottantulal. It's a classical dance form evolved in the state of Kerala, India. The Tulal performer is supported by a singer who repeats the verses and is accompanied by a Mardangam. Which are the following statements about is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. It is essentially a recite and dance art form, not a festival. Okay, so that's why it is not a classical dance form. See, Indian classical dance is only nine of them. From Kerala, it's not a classical dance. You need to be very specific when you're seeing the options. It's not a classical dance. I knew that people would just put it as classical dance. It's a uh, recite and dance art form. It was introduced in 18th century by Kuchan Nambiar, one of the Prachina Karayams. And uh, <clears throat> it is mainly seen in the temple and cultural programs. Uh, these performances elaborate expressions and stories recited in the verses of um, different mythological tales. Uh, this performance, the costume, the presentation is very, very similar to how your uh, the regular um, Kathakali is done. <laughs> Uh, in three separate versions, it includes Ottantullal, Sidangantullal, and Parayandullal. Three formats are there. Ot, uh, Stullal performance. Consider the following statements about Golden Globe. It was in 1995 and is given by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association annually for American and international film and television artists. This award is considered an important precursor to Oscars. No Indian movie has uh, won a Golden Globe Award, Golden Globe Award till date. Which of the following statements is or are correct? The Golden Globe. One and two, three only, one and three, one, two and three. Answer is C. Golden Club Mila Thana recently. Not correct, Pucha. <laughs> They're asking not correct. RRR. Got it, no? It has started in 1944 and is given by Hollywood Free Press Association. 
and uh, the award is considered important precursor to Oscars. Yes, Rajamouli is uh, RRR won the Golden Globe, no? For the original score, not to not to. Right? Question is asking not correct. Because the following statements regarding Dholavira. The walls were made of sandstone or limestone instead of mud bricks like in uh, many other Harappan sites. Extensive mortal remains of humans have been discovered at Dholavira. It was also a hub of manufacturing jewelry made of shells and semi-precious stones. Which are the following statements is or are correct? Right. The answer is C. Yes. Yes, Pars. Yes, Ajay. Yes. The site, 45 Citadel, with a middle town, lower town, walls made of sandstone or limestone, uh, instead of mud bricks. Um, if you remember, I told you once also in the class that uh, in Indus Valley, in the Gujarat section, Saurashtra section, it is not as necessary that all constructions are made of baked bricks. They could use stone as well. <coughs> and uh, unlike graves of IBC, no mortal remains of humans have been discovered at Dholavira. Although the remains of uh, copper smelted in Harappans who lived in Dholavira. The new metallurgy, it was also a hub of manufacturing jewelry made of shells and semi precious stones like agate and used to export timber. Because of the following statements Dolavera, an archaeological site of Harappan's era city, is located in Haryana. Dolavera is the first site of ancient Indus Valley civilization in India to get UNESCO World Heritage Site tag. Which of the following statements is or are incorrect? <coughs> The answer is A. Incorrect. 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 B. I'm being very specific. The Dolivera is the first site of ancient Indian civilization in India. If all ancient Indian civilization, it will be Mohanjadaro. Dolivera is in Gujarat. Yes, that's why incorrect is asking. No, that's why A is incorrect. Right, Varsha. No problem. Correct only. <coughs> Last question for the day. What is the primary goal of Archaeological Survey of India? To preserve and protect ancient architectural structures, to study and research the history of Indian civilization, to promote tourism in India, and to excavate and discover new archaeological sites. Primary purpose of Archaeological Survey of India. <coughs> Answer is A. ASI is a government agency responsible for preservation and protection of ancient architectural monuments. It works to preserve and maintain the site so that they can enjoy and they can be enjoyed by future generations. ASI is not only, I mean, the, the exclusive, the mentioned aim is not to excavate and discover new sites. It is to preserve and protect the monuments in India. Having said that, guys, uh, that's it in this session for today. Let us meet in the next session.
which is on uh, Friday, which is day after tomorrow. And today is 21st. Twenty second is Thursday, twenty third. Twenty third morning, nine o'clock, nine a.m. We'll meet again. We'll continue the next series of previous year questions, season three. Meanwhile, if you have any doubts, anything that you need, or any topic to be rediscussed on one of these sessions, definitely do let me know. You can telegram me directly, or you can Instagram me there, and I'll be able to help you out with that. Okay, thank you guys. You have a nice day. Bye bye.